now call the first session back into order. This afternoon, we have a special treat for you. I'm pleased to introduce Chief Master Sergeant Retired Mike Kennedy from the great state of Tennessee, who will sing his rendition of the song, Always Been the Soldier, for us. We're going to do that right now. Take it away, Chief. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'd just like to say it's a privilege for me to be here today and just know that this song is dedicated to each and every one of you who have served and continue to serve our great organization and our country and for what it stands for. freedom of the press not Jerry Falwell, Larry Flint Ted Kennedy or Jesse Jackson given us the freedom to verbally express not the campus organizers all the demonstrations given us the freedom to march, freely march and disagree. Oh, can't you see? It has always been the soldier who has made the sacrifice, standing strong and Proud in battle, willing to lay down his life. Somewhere there's a soldier, and she's looking at a picture of her little girl. Oh, she wishes she were whole. And somewhere there's a soldier And he's reading a love letter from his wife And she is telling him how she feels so all alone And somewhere there's a mom and dad Who cry late in the night For the son who won't be coming home A son who gave his life Freedom isn't free, oh, can't you see, it has always been the soldier who has made the sacrifice, standing strong and proud in battle. Willing to lay down his life To the angry man who shakes his fist And burns the stars and stripes The same flag that drapes the coffins Of those who gave their lives There's no other place that you will go Or you have ever been where the blood of soldiers gives the right to burn that flag again. It has always been the soldier who has made the sacrifice, standing strong. Proud in battle, willing to 
laid out his life. Since December 1636, when that first muster was called, the National Guard has answered that call. So I would invite, if you are a retired command chief, command sergeant major, sergeant major, chief master sergeant, any of those senior enlisted leaders who have served at that level to please stand now and be recognized. Yes, thank you. Thank you for what you have done and what you continue to do for our country. It has always been the soldier who has made the sacrifice, standing strong and proud in battle, willing to lay down his life. Thank you, Chief. Great job. Appreciate that. All right. And we're going to go back in. We've got a few more um, introductions that we wanted to do. So first of all, get back. I'd like to introduce a couple of special people we have from the Association of the United States Army, General Carter Ham, who is the president and CEO. Are you in the room, sir? There he is. All right. And with them also is Former Sergeant Major of the Army, Ken Preston, the AUSA VP of NCO Programs, right out there. Thank you. All right, also on our group list, I looked past earlier, but we also want to recognize on behalf of our auxiliary president and myself, the auxiliary past presidents. So any of them in the room, in the back? Yes, there you guys go. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, at this time, we're gonna move into uh, some recognition of our platinum partners. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, we can't do a conference of this size uh, on our own. And so we really count on those exhibitors and appreciate all their support. And Ingus has a number of what we call our level is platinum partners. And so at this point, I'd like to, actually we've asked representatives and I believe they're in the room to come forward as I call their name and we'll just have them line up here and give them some special recognition. So representative from Ashford University, you here? Yes, come on forward, thank you so much. You just stand. All right, Colorado Technical University. I know Mike was here, there he is. Thank you. Excelsior College. Excelsior, maybe not here, all right. Uh, Grand Canyon University. Come on, who's here from Grand Canyon? All right, out of my neck of the woods, George, it's good to see you. Uh, Grantham University. There we go. Thank you. Humana Military Tricare East. Humana's in the house. Thank you. All right. University of Phoenix. There she is. All right. Okay, another longtime partner, USAA. 
Dick, Josie, where are you guys at? There they are. And Boeing, is Kathy here? Okay, all right, sorry. Uh, DeVry Works. DeVry, there we go. And last but not least on my list, American Military University. AMU. All right. All right, like I said, we can't thank you all enough for your continued support of Ingus and our annual conference. So let's give them another round of applause. Please get out and especially make it to these guys' booth and give them some love. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so I now call on the Ingus Treasurer, Chief Master Sergeant Steve Burris for the Treasurer's Report. So good afternoon. How is everybody? We having fun so far? We welcome our PD, right? I know they're not here now. They got important business to do without us. So I get to come up and talk about the money, right? The most popular thing up here. Everybody wants to hear about money. So I believe I have some slides that I'm hoping they're going to put up for me. Yeah, they're going to pull them up. So Literally, this is the third time that I stood before you as your treasurer, and it's an honor every time to stand here. But I get to talk about how we're doing. You know, when, when you look at money, that is what drives every organization, right? You got to have your funds. So we've been working diligently in finance and as the association uh, to better ourselves and put us in a better financial position. You know, when I start, first started, we made some changes with our investment accounts. We moved them around, and that's paid dividends to us, as you're going to see here in just a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and put the next slide. Oh, I have a clicker. I get to do it myself. He's like, nah, you can do it. I'm good with that. I love eye charts. That's why I put this up so that you can see it. Everybody read that? That is my official report. It'll be posted. You'll go out to the conference files, read it, and we're good. Thanks. Have a nice day. <laughs> no, I, I probably am not going to get away that easy. So what that report shows is it shows how much money we have on hand, cash assets that we can um, touch. If you'll notice, the first two lines are blue. I, that's all you can see. It's blue. Those two lines will be closed by the end of the year. They are a Navy Federal Credit Union account that we had because the Ingus credit cards or previously with Navy Federal Credit Union. Um, we do have some reward miles that we're using for travel to save more money. So they will be used by the end of the year. Once they are used up, we will close those two accounts. They will no longer be showing. Right now there's $40.32 in an operating account and six cents in a savings account. So, hey, you know, that's a plus, positive. Today in our Capital One operating account, we have $449,270.81. Our money market account holds $26,218. That money market account is for the sole purpose of transferring. As we gain membership, the bylaws state that for every annual member, you'll place $1 into the restricted reserves and 50% of the lifetime will go into restricted reserves. That is a processing account that we so we transfer quarterly to our investment account. So that transfer will be made here probably in the next month to put another $26,000 into the uh, restricted reserve. Our VEP account, which is um, the Veterans Education Project that I know many of you are very familiar with, holds about $28,585.70. The investment account, the restricted reserve, past presidents, are, how many are in the room? I see most of you. Gentlemen, I'm proud to tell you that today we are over a half a million dollars in our restricted reserve account, $512,595.07. In our building account, $795,022.81 for a total Ingus account of $1.8 million. In our We Care for America account, thanks guys. 
I had a goal and I did not reach it, and I'll tell you that in just a minute. We Care for America holds $63,598.96 in our operating account, $35,306.85 in a money market account for $99,265.81 in We Care for America. Total. So total cash on hand, $1,910,998.50. My goal was $2 million for the conference, and we did not make it. I am sorry for that, but we will continue to try harder. As you are about to see, for the last three years, we have increased in every account that we have. That gives you the three reports that I've provided at the end of the year. So when you look at the numbers, let me get my actual numbers up so I can read them because I can't read that either. So we've gone from 1.5, 1,503,581.80 in 2017 to 1,795,876.23 in 2018 to the 1,910,000 that I quoted a few minutes ago. I am very happy to stand here today and tell you Angus is on some of the most solid financial ground they have been in many, many years. And it would only be possible if it weren't for the donations that you guys have created from We Care for America, your work to bring in corporate sponsors in, the diligence of the Finance Committee and the Executive Council at making sure that the money that's spent is spent for the right reasons for our association. Madam President, this concludes my report as a treasurer. Thank you, Steve. This is an informational report and requires no action. Without objection, the report will be filed. And I just want to say again, thank you to Steve. He's, I, I know he's in the checking accounts. He's working all hours of the night because I can call him at just about any time and he's already on top of stuff. So I want to thank him as well as our um, Finance Committee Chair uh, John Harris. So great job there. All right, so now we're getting ready to go to one, everybody's most favorite time of the afternoon, the roll call of the states. Is everybody ready? Got your flags, got your people, everybody's ready? All right, I now call on our Ingus Secretary, Jeremy Thompson, for the roll call of the states. Good afternoon, everybody. A few administrative announcements for you guys before you stand up to uh, represent your states. We'll call Iowa, Arkansas, and New Mexico in the first three order. Everybody following will be in alphabetical order. Iowa will have 15 minutes. Arkansas will have 10 minutes. New Mexico will have five minutes. And all following states will have one minute each. At this time, I'd like to call Iowa forward for their Introduction. 15 minutes. Ooh, it's even the clock's running too. First off, welcome to Iowa. We hope you enjoy your stay. We have shown you a video the last couple of years of Des Moines. Not this year. This year you're gonna experience here in a few hours. And you'll get to see it yourself. My team is out setting up for tonight's event. Uh, we will have food and drink available this evening, and I'll explain more of that right before we dismiss for the evening. The longer I talk, the longer it will take for us to go out and party. With that being said, Iowa's in the house. Thank you, Iowa. We'd like to introduce Arkansas for 10 minutes. Hello, Ingus. All right. <laughs> I'm First Sergeant Derek Young, First Vice President of the Arkansas Enlisted Association and Chair of the 2020 Ingus Conference. It is my pleasure to be with you today. On behalf of the Arkansas National Guard, City of Little Rock, and the Convention Visitors Bureau, we cannot wait to welcome you to Arkansas 2020. 
In Little Rock, we like to say that everything is better with a Southern accent. And we believe that Inga's 2020 will be the best in Little Rock. We are already working hard to make that happen. My job today is to put Little Rock on your radar because I promise you that once you get to Little Rock in 2020, you'll be blown away. It's a pleasant surprise that we can't wait to share with you. Little Rock is a beautiful city on the Arkansas River with a lot to offer our group. Whether you fly or drive, getting to downtown hotels is quite easy. As a matter of fact, the airport is a free seven minute shuttle ride to downtown hotels. Once you are downtown, you won't need to leave. All the hotels are easy, walking or streetcar distance to the meeting, awesome restaurants and fun. And Ingus will own Little Rock when we are there. The locals cannot wait to meet us and roll out the red carpet to treat us like the VIPs we know we are. I like to spotlight a few local attractions that Little Rock has to offer. The Downtown River Market District is Little Rock's premier entertainment district with museums, a park, a number of restaurants, bars, and shops, all within walking distance from Inga's meeting space at the host hotel. There are 45 restaurants within walking distance, and we have a great nightlife that boasts live music and a vibrant atmospheres. Additionally, you can take advantage of a non-stop of non-stop flights on one of six airlines serving Bill and Hillary Clinton National Airport. Many of Arkansas historic landmarks and attractions are located in downtown Little Rock or nearby. We have Little Rock, uh, we have the Little Rock Central High School National Historic Site, Helfer International and the Urban Farm, Arkansas Art Center, MacArthur Museum of Arkansas Military History, and that's where General Douglas MacArthur was born, the Arkansas Inland Marine uh, Maritime Museum with two important World War II vessels, the Arkansas River Trail, the Big Dam Bridge, that's the longest pedestrian and bike bridge in the country. <laughs> Lots of local craft breweries and distilleries, just to name a few. Now that I have piqued your interest by detailing some of what we have to offer, I bet you just can't wait to come to Little Rock. With that being said, please know that you can take advantage of the early bird registration via the Ingus mobile app. Also, Arkansas has a booth in the exhibit hall, booth 119. When you visit that booth, you can purchase a raffle ticket for only $5 that give you the opportunity to win a five night stay during the 2020 Big Dam Conference. Of course, the best way that I can introduce Little Rock is to have you there in person. But until then, this short video would have to do. Roll the video. Governor Asa Hutchinson, Commander in Chief of the Arkansas National Guard. On behalf of all Arkansans, welcome to the natural state. We honor that you have chosen Arkansas and Little Rock for the Ingus Conference in August of 2020. During your time here, I'm confident you will feel welcomed by the Arkansans you meet. We're patriotic and we love our soldiers and airmen. As governor, I've seen firsthand what the National Guard does when a crisis strikes. Whether it's snow, ice, a tornado, or flooding like we saw in May and June of this year, the National Guard heads to the front lines and stays until the crisis has passed. The time you spend at your national conferences helps keep the National Guard strong, ready, and relevant. By advocating at the federal level for better benefits, modernized military equipment, and adequate resourcing, you're helping me and other governors recruit and fill your ranks. In Arkansas, we've worked together to end the state tax on military pensions to encourage more military members to retire here and call Arkansas home. Thank you again for choosing Arkansas.
Hey y'all, I'm Major J. Great state of Arkansas and the capital city of Little Rock for their conference in 2020. Ingus is a pretty big deal. That's why we branded this event as the Big Damn Conference for 2020. If you've never visited the natural state before, come and see us and get ready for some real hospitality from the moment that you arrive. We're rolling out the red carpet and you can bet it'll be Razorback Red. Woo pig sir! So woo pig silly! <laughs> Arkansas is in the house. We have five delegates, five professional development attendees, three auxiliary members, our state command sergeant major, and our Little Rock CVB here present. We will see you in the big damn conference. Whoa. We'll now introduce New Mexico for five minutes. All right, good afternoon, Ingus. I am uh, Command Sergeant Major Retired Willie Grego. I am the current president for the uh, New Mexico Enlisted Association. So first of all, greetings from the land of enchantment. Uh, New Mexico wants to thank Iowa for your great hospitality. Arkansas, be looking out for us here to be in your back pocket this coming year as we get ready for Albuquerque, New Mexico. Conference date, August 8th through 11th, 2021. Oh. Could I, get a, could I get a raise of hands of people who have been to Albuquerque or New Mexico? Raise your hand. All right. We, we, <laughs> we look forward to seeing you there. Hey, Albuquerque, continually rank one of the most affordable destinations in the U.S. Rich multicultural heritage and history, 310 days of sunshine, average high of 92 degrees with an average low of 65 degrees with low humidity. We are the land of the plenty. As you know, plenty of aliens, plenty of pinon nuts. Hey, I'll tell you what. And New Mexico cuisine, red or green, Colorado, I am sorry. I know CNN, Fox News try to do their best, but New Mexico is the chili capital of the world. Oh. We got genuine Southwestern hospitality, 23 daily nonstop flights across the United States, Hotels and convention center are only 10 minutes away from the airport. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to our conference chair, Chief Master Sergeant Dan Robson, who's going to give a little bit further details. Dan? Hello, everybody. So the good news is there's direct flights from just about everywhere in the United States, with the exception of Alaska, Hawaii, some of those places. But uh, very, very... Uh, uh, affordable. After we looked at it, typically even the flights from Hawaii were ru running right now in the $400 range, so it definitely a, a, a good opportunity. Can't do anything about Guam. I know that's quite far away, but everything else is pretty good. We want you to bring your families because Albuquerque is truly one of the most beautiful destinations in the United States that you can come to. We have some stuff there that has been around before the beginning of the United States. So uh, we have the historic old town uh, that's been there since roughly around the 1600s. There, there's some neat things to do there. Uh, the historic Route 66 ran through Albuquerque and there's a lot of nightlife along it. Uh, we have the National Hispanic Cultural Center, the Indian Public Cultural Center, and some of these events and venues, we're going to actually take everybody to. We want you to see some of the culture and flavor of New Mexico. Uh, but we also want you to get your families up on the uh, Sandia Peak Tramway. It's one of the highest ones in the world, as well as see some of the hot air ballooning that we have in Albuquerque. Accommodations, and we'll get you there. So... We have some really neat hotels. They've all been renovated pretty recently. So the Doubletree by Hilton got renovated last year. The Hyatt Regency is a beautiful hotel. And then the Hotel Andalus is the second uh, Conrad Hilton property. Um, it's a historic property and there's rooms there as well. We have 700 rooms within one block walking distance of the convention center. And we basically have this whole square uh, in front of it. Most of the venues and events we're gonna have right there. So you're not gonna have to travel that far. And the stuff that we do have out of there, we have buses already pre-planned now uh, with tour guides, if believe it or not. The convention center is about as big as this one that you're in today, uh, but they wanted me to tell everybody to make sure that you know that we can actually put tanks on the exhibitor floor. So if anybody can figure out how to get a tank there, please let me know because we would love to have that in there, okay? <laughs> uh, so with that, uh, they're just a, quick pictures of the uh, convention center and we're gonna show you a video. 
Dave. General Ken Nava, Adjutant General of the New Mexico National Guard. And my name is Chief Master Sergeant Mitchell Brush. I'm a senior enlisted leader for New Mexico. On behalf of Governor Lujan Grisham and the 4,000 New Mexico National Guard airmen and soldiers, I would like to welcome you to the Iangus 2021 Conference in New Mexico. I know you're gonna have a great time here and see why we're called the Land of Enchantment. <laughs> It is difficult to describe Albuquerque. Both ancient, cutting edge, equal parts cool and quaint. It is an oasis in the high desert, full of people with rich histories and inspiring ideas you won't find anywhere else. There is truly no other city like it. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but even that many will be doing Albuquerque severe injustice. Because a snapshot is only a tiny peephole into the thousands of layers of sights, sounds, spices, scents, and stories. And one must look at all of Albuquerque's facets in order to grasp its beauty. Because of this, no visitor here can possibly see it the same as another. From the businesswoman witnessing a thousand-year-old sacred ritual, to the skier gazing upon the snow-blanketed mountainside, or the scientist peering into his microscope towards a better future, to the culinary aficionado reawakening his taste buds. One must look at all of Albuquerque's ingredients in order to grasp its true flavor. There is truly no other city like it. All right. Mr. Secretary, New Mexico is in the house. Thank you to Iowa, Arkansas, and New Mexico. The following states will give their introductions from the floor mics, starting with Alabama for one minute. I'll stay here, might as well. Is it on? Hi, y'all. My name is Mike Oakley, Sergeant Major, retired, one each. And we are proud to be here. The great state of Alabama has 32 members present, and that includes five PDs, and our state CSM, Donnie Grace, is on his way. Alabama joined the Union as the 22nd state in 1819. The Yellowhammer State, the Cotton State, deep in the heart of Dixie, birthplace of the Civil Rights Movement, and Huntsville, the Rocket City, and proud member of Area 3. Birthplace of Helen Keller, Hank Aaron, Rosa Parks, Jesse Owens, Harper Lee, Coretta Scott King, Carl Lewis, Hank Williams Sr., Bo Jackson, Nat King Cole, Willie Mays, Booker T. Washington, and Condoleezza Rice. Home to the first Wright Brothers Flying School and Birmingham's Vulcan, the world's largest cast iron statue. Home of both the University of Alabama with 17 NCAA tackle football national championships, roll tide, and Auburn University, they have two, War Eagle, and Troy University, the world's largest campus. Alabama is in the house. Thank you. Alaska for one minute. Greetings from the land of the midnight sun. We come to you shaken but not stirred after the 7.0 earthquake we had. Baked but not fried after the record-breaking heat wave that we had. Smoked but not burnt after the 1.4 million acres of forest fires this summer. We have five members in attendance, three delegates. Just remember, winter is coming. Alaska is in the house. Thank you. Arizona for one minute. Madam President, Arizona brings three delegates, five professional development, four attendees, two guests. For many of you who attended uh, the conference in 2014, Arizona is known for the Sunshine State. While we may not be called that, it has sunshine 85% of the year, and yes, it is hot. It's also home of the Grand Canyon, big hole in the ground, but it is one of the world's uh, natural wonders. So. Uh, make sure you visit that. And for those who didn't know, the original Legend Bridge was shipped stone by stone and reconstructed in Lake Havasu City. Again, another uh, sight to see. 
Arizona is the only place in the United States where you can be in four states at once. So you can plant a hand in each state and a foot in each state. It's at the intersection of Arizona, Colorado, Utah, and New Mexico. Madam President, Arizona's in the house. Thank you, Arizona. California for one minute. California, where we put ranch and avocados on everything, and our Mexican food is definitely better than yours. <laughs> we are home to every amusement park you and your kids want to go to, and we have more national parks than every other state. Whatever you're looking for, California has it. So please, come and visit, and you'll discover that in California, we have a tax for that. <laughs> for the Cal Guard, we have four seasons, fires, floods, earthquakes, and riots. We are not only always ready and always there, but we are always busy. We are home to the 40th Infantry Division, commanded by Major General Laura Yeager, the first woman to lead a U.S. Army Infantry Division. In California, we are making history and breaking barriers. We are here representing over 23,000 soldiers and airmen. We have five PDs and five delegates. Mr. Secretary, California is in the house. Thank you, California. Colorado for one minute. Colorado is in the house, second of the 135th Aviation Battalion preparing for deployment, 140th Wing preparing for return from deployment. Colorado is home of the beautiful Rocky Mountains, the Denver Broncos football, Rockies baseball, Avalanche and Eagles hockey, and Rapid soccer, and host for the 141st Nagas Conference at the end of this month. We have five PDs, 16 three delegates, one president, one vice president, and six at large for a total of 16 president or present in the house, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Secretary. Colorado Thank you. Connecticut for one minute. Connecticut, the Constitution State, home of the first telephone book, first nuclear-powered submarine, inventors of the first hamburger, and the oldest continuously published newspaper. In 2004, Connecticut made history when it became the first Division I school to have a men and women's basketball team win the national championship in the same year. Ten years later, we decided to do it again, and we're still the only state. We're the inventors of the lobster roll, home of WWE and Pez. We're the creators and home of wiffle ball. We're the home of Mark Twain, the birthplace for Seth MacFarlane, Joey Logano, and Paul Newman. We're the only state where it's acceptable to be a New York or Boston fan. Although we don't have a professional sports team, we provide you a sports center every day. You're welcome. This year we have six attendees, three delegates, three PDs, and our state command sergeant major. Connecticut is in the house. Thank you, Connecticut. Delaware for one minute. Delaware was the first state to ratify this constitution on December 7, 1787. In 2002, a first grade class requested that the nickname the first state be made official. Another nickname for Delaware is the Diamond State. Delaware was also a home to the reggae royalty for a brief period, Bob Marley, who lived and worked for the DuPont Company and Chrysler Assembly Plant. Also home to the Dover Downs NASCAR, and Monster Mile and Dover Air Force Base. Also home to the former Vice President Joe Biden, who's also a candidate for the Democratic Party nomination for the 2020 election. We have in the House with us today our Adjutant General, Brigadier General Mike Berry, Chief Master Sergeant Patricia Ottinger, uh, Command Sergeant Major Crossman, Area 2 Director Velda Sy, Pauline White, Al Grimager, Don Sella Johnson, Area 2, and Delaware National Guard Secretary, 1PD, Senior Air, Airman, sorry, Brianna Gibbs. Mr. Secretary, Delaware is in the house! Thank you, Delaware. District of Columbia for one minute. District of Columbia, we are not a state, we are not a territory. Founded in 1790, we serve as the nation's capital, home to the federal government. Today, we are present with eight personnel, three PD. D.C. is in the house. Thank you, D.C. Florida for one minute. Greetings from the real Sunshine State. 
I was going to have a video from our governor, Ron DeSantis, but he said, Sergeant Williams, you got this. So, uh, some facts. Uh, St. Augustine, Florida is the oldest European settlement in North America. Uh, Orlando attracts more visitors than any other amusement park destination in the U.S. Florida is a peninsula, I meaning it's completely surrounded by water. It has the second longest coastline of all contiguous states. It's the most desired place for all you retirees uh, to live when you retire. And there's no personal income tax. We have 15 attendees, two professional development, and two delegates. Mr. Secretary, Sunshine State in the house. Thank you, Florida. <laughs> Georgia for one minute. Mr. Secretary, greetings from the great state of Georgia, the largest state east of the Mississippi, where 75 years ago, five battalions, a total of 5,200 Georgia Guardsmen were stormed the beaches of Normandy on D-Day. We also had the privilege of hosting the 1996 beautiful Summer Olympics in our beautiful capital, Atlanta. We are home to the world of Coca-Cola, where you can sample over 100 foreign and domestic varieties of Coke from around the world. We have the largest swamp in North America, one of the largest masses of exposed granite in the world, known as the Stone Mountain. And this year, Georgia has four PDs, two auxiliaries, six members in the house, because y'all know, every day is a great day to be a Georgia peach. <laughs> Thank you, Georgia. Guam, for one minute. Is Guam here? No, no. No here, okay. Hawaii, for one minute. President Craig, fellow 50 territories and a District of Columbia on behalf of Major General Joe Logan, the Hawaii National Guard Enlisted Association and its 4,600 enlisted soldiers and airmen, aloha from the great state of Hawaii, home to our 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama, Democratic presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard, Bruno Mars, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, Aquaman, Jason Momoa, Lomi Lomi Salmon, Kalua Pig, Fish and Poi, our five delegates, two VDs, two auxiliaries, wish a huge mahalo thank you to the great state of Iowa, Uamal Ke'el, Oka'aina Ikapono, the 50th state, loves corn and is in the house. <laughs> mahalo. Thank you, Hawaii. Idaho, for one minute. Idaho? Illinois for one minute. Indiana. Mr. Secretary, Indiana with 21 attendees present and four delegates. We appreciate the warm welcome from all involved and appreciate the effort that went into it. Indiana's National Guard dates back to 1801 with the original militias. This eventually evolved into the Indiana Rangers in 1807. While they're not the conventional rangers we know today, neither was Walker, Walker, Texas Ranger, and we know which one is more lethal. So, <laughs> speaking of rangers, Indiana is comprised of a myriad of diverse units, uh, one of those being the Vietnam Rangers, or Delta Company, 151st Infantry. Uh, which other ones? I'm glad you asked. Uh, we also have an infantry division, a cyber warfare unit, 122nd Fighter Wing, uh, Long-range surveillance assets, airborne infantry, Alpha Company, 2nd Battalion, 20th Special Forces Group, airborne, and not to mention again, but the Vietnam Rangers. These are just a few, you know, no big deal. But joking aside, Indiana does pride itself on service, and we're thankful to be here. Indiana is in the house. Thank you, Indiana. Kansas for one minute. Mr. Secretary, Kansas, home to President Eisenhower, the Wizard of Oz, and the city of Emporia, credited for establishing Veterans Day. <coughs> home of great universities such as K-State, Kansas University, Rock, Rock. and Wichita State. I knew I'd have one. <laughs> we have six voting delegates, 19 conference attendees, two professional development, three auxiliary members, and our Kansas senior enlisted leaders present. Kansas, Mr. Secretary, Kansas is in the house. Rock Chuck Jayhawk! Thank you, Kansas. Woo! Kentucky for one minute. Kentucky? Louisiana for one minute. Mr. President, sorry we were not here last year, 
but we are back in the house. We have five members in attendance with three delegates and four PDs and our state command star major. We are the owner of the highest paid receiver in the NFL and the only state that can make the Mississippi flow backwards. Who that? Again, Louisiana's back in the house. I'm the secretary. <laughs> Louisiana, thank you. Maine for one minute. Maryland, Maine? Right here. Sorry, <clears throat> Maine for one minute. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Maine is two delegates. Uh, sorry, one delegate, one attendee. Maine is in the house. Thank you, Maine. Maryland, for one minute. Maryland, the old line state, or even the little America, because we have all types of terrain. We have the mountains, the beaches, the sand dunes, the farmland, the forest. We're probably best known for our seafood, especially the Maryland crab, until recently when another animal got more news than anybody else. We have 11 attendees in the house, two delegates, five PD, including the 2019 National Guard Best Warrior Soldier winner. And our senior enlisted leader will be here tomorrow. Maryland is in the house. Thank you, Maryland. <laughs> Massachusetts for one minute. Massachusetts in here. Michigan. Minnesota. Come on, Ray. I'm here. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, Minnesota, home to the seventh Ingus president, Tony Nathy, um, the, uh, the world famous Spam Museum and Spam Factory. And <laughs> some people like spam, most Minnesotans don't, but that's okay. We can still brag about it. Um, Minnesota's in the house with uh, five delegates, uh, one PD, and uh, three other attendees. Thank you. Mississippi, for one minute. Mr. Secretary, from the 20th State of the Union, home of Elvis Presley, Kermit the Frog, Root Beer, and Pine Sol. <laughs> the world capital of catfish, cotton, sweet potatoes, and tow boats. The first state to sell shoes by the pair, believe it or not. All right, the hospitality state. Mississippi brings 16 delegates, 23 proxies, a total of 39 volts to the floor. Our senior enlisted advisor, state command sergeant major, and TAG is on the way. Mr. Secretary, Mississippi is in the house. Thank you, Mississippi. Missouri, for one minute. Mr. Secretary, Missouri is in the house, home of the NHL champion, St. Louis Blues, also home of the most exciting offense in NFL football with the Kansas City Chiefs. Easy, easy. All right. Uh, Missouri, Missouri has four attendees, two delegates, and Missouri is in the house. Thank you. Montana, for one minute. Not two. Not two, one. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, hello from Big Sky Country, where 46 out of 56 counties have an average population of six or fewer people per square mile. <laughs> where we invite you to get lost in Montana. Elk and Elk, deer, and antelope outnumber humans. No, we don't want your help with that. <laughs> Montana has six members and two special guests, including the Adjutant General Matt Quinn and our, command, our State Command Sergeant Major coming. Montana's in the house. Thank you, Montana. <laughs> Nebraska, for one minute. Wow, this microphone sure is high. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, Nebraska is in the house, and while our travel motto may be, it's not for everybody, we really know that Nebraska is the good life. Nebraska is known for the home of the world-famous Sean Griffith, chili and cinnamon rolls, Kool-Aid, the Reuben sandwich, and Carhenge, which for those who are unfamiliar, it's like Stonehenge, but just with cars. 
So, yeah, it's pretty cool. We are here with a record of 28 members, four PD, three delegates, our TAG, and State Command Sergeant Major. Mr. Secretary, Nebraska is in the house, and go Big Red! Yee, yee! Thank you, Nebraska. Nevada. Nevada, the only state you can legally drink, gamble, buy a gun, smoke marijuana, and pay for a prostitute all at the grocery store. <laughs> Defenders of the infamous Raid Area 51 Facebook event, home of the biggest little city and Sin City. Mr. Secretary, with three delegates, the great battle-born state of Nevada is in the house. Thank you, Nevada. New Hampshire, for one minute. Mr. Secretary, thank you, Iowa, for hosting this year's Angus Conference. We are from the Granite State, where our motto is live free or die. We have two delegates, two PDs, two members. We're looking forward to the future conferences in Little Rock and Albuquerque. We are the ninth state in the Union. New Hampshire's in the house. Thank you, New Hampshire. New Jersey. For one minute. Mr. Sec Mr. Secretary, greetings from the Garden State, the most densely state, most densely populated state in the country, or the concrete state. We are here with nine personnel, our state command chief, our state CSM, and two professional developments. We're the first of the new states like New York, New Hampshire, to drop new, we're just Jersey. We're small, we're cocky, we're fast, we do it better than you. From the revolution through today, Mr. Secretary, New Jersey is in the house. Thank you, New Jersey. New York. <laughs> New York State, the Empire State. Many of you may not know that New York has 62 counties, 62 cities, 553 villages, and 932 towns, not just five boroughs and one big apple. Although it's the second most apple producing state in the country, New York is the birthplace of Uncle Sam, potato chips, and the modern air conditioner, which I'm thankful for this week. Uh, you can have New York City to thank for uh, toilet paper, Buffalo to thank for buffalo wings, and Rochester to thank for jello, marshmallows, and gold teeth. And yes, we will tax you on all of it. So next time you bite into a potato chip, turn on your air conditioner, remember to thank New York, the Empire State. New York is here with 17 attendees, including five delegates and three PDs. Thank you, New York. <laughs> National Guard Bureau, Title 10. So we still don't make anything, and we still don't sell anything. However, I would like every, to invite everyone to stop by the IPSA briefing at the Army Futures Command breakout on Wednesday from 10.30 to 12 o'clock in rooms 302 to 304. IPSA is here. It is not going the way of dimers. So Pennsylvania, Virginia, Maryland, and DC are currently online. Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maine, Delaware, and New Jersey will be online by the end of this month. This is how all personnel actions for all Army National Guard soldiers will be action. So please stop by the breakout and see what it's all about. Also, the NGBT-10 chapter is co-sponsoring the National Guard Birthday Gala in Washington, D.C. on December 7th. So I would like to invite everyone here to attend. Um, I have flyers if anyone is interested. You get to dress up all fancy, enjoy dinner and dancing, a live band, and a DJ. So come on out, enjoy a great night. Mr. Secretary, with three attendees, one PD, the IPSA team, and Command Sergeant Major Sampa, NGB is in the house. Thank you. North Carolina. North Carolina, the Tar Heel State, with two uh, delegates and two PD is in the house. Thank you. <laughs> North Dakota. Mr. Secretary, uh, Secretary, we have five delegates, six on PD, and uh, because of us, we are not dependent on Middle East oil. We have barley for your beer, and we also are the home of Carson Wentz, and NDSU football, 
and uh, Straight Arrows and the Happy Hooligans. North Dakota is in the house. Thank you. Ohio. Ohio, birthplace of eight U.S. presidents, birthplace of astronauts John Glenn and Neil Armstrong, birthplace of aviation in the Wright brothers, birthplace of golfing legend Jack Nicklaus, home of the NFL Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio, home of the Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio, home of Skyline Chile, and home of the only two-time Heisman Trophy winner, Archie Griffin. We have five delegates, one PD, and 19 total Ohioans in attendance. OH. Thank you. Oklahoma. Nobody from Oklahoma? Oregon. Okay. Pennsylvania. Mr. Secretary. Pennsylvania, from the formation of the Associators, making our National Guard older than America, to the Founding Fathers meeting in Philadelphia to draft the documents of freedom, or being home to the 28th Infantry Division, the oldest continuously serving division in the United States Army, and the only commando solo psychological and information operations aircraft in the United States military. We lead the way. We continue to lead by being home of the Army National Guard's NCO of the Year, Eric Freeland, and home of CSM Christopher Kepner. By celebrating successful passing of legislation that allows our families to use the Education Assistance Program or the Military Family Education Program, and being the first in the world to roll out, to roll out I'm sorry, the newest personnel platform, IPSE. Okay, we led the way. From the state that keeps the memories of the lone bugler, Dick Pintler, alive, with seven delegates and 23 attendees. Mr. Secretary, Pennsylvania is in the house. Thank you. Puerto Rico. Rhode Island. Good afternoon, Mr. Secretary. Greetings from the 3,000 members of the Rhode Island National Guard. Rhode Island, home of the the Tucket Red Sox, AAA affiliate of the world champion Red Sox. Former home of the world championship practice field. Home of the Providence Bruins. Home of the URI Rams and the Providence College Friars. Home of Rhode Island Clear Chowder and Clam Cakes. Mr. Secretary, Rhode Island is in the house. Thank you. <laughs> South Carolina. Mr. Secretary, South Carolina, the Palmetto State, home of the 2018 NCAA football champions, Clemson Tigers. Hey! Sorry, sorry, Alabama for last year. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, home of Nikki Haley, home of General Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox. We have 18 in attendance, eight delegates, eight auxiliary members, four PDs. South Carolina's in the house. Thank you. <laughs> South Dakota. South Dakota, where in God we trust and our Governor Christy Noll makes sure the kids in school know that. As the motorcycles flooded the interstates, we headed to the opposite direction to catch Des Moines. We have the highest summit east of the Rocky Mountains, a palace made of corn, mashed potato wrestling, and home of the original Daisy Duke. The, least, the fifth least populated state, please come visit, but don't move there. <laughs> we have the most superior National Guard in the United States. We brought 27 South Dakotans, 13 delegates, and four PDs. Mr. Secretary, South Dakota's in the house. Thank you. <laughs> Tennessee. Mr. Secretary, coming into our aisle with our friends Jack and George, Tennessee is the home of moon pies, goo goo clusters, and world famous Memphis style barbecue. If you're a little thirsty, wash it all down with some Jack Daniels and George Dickel whiskey or a few shots of moonshine. Our guard from the air can carry you, refuel you, or have eyes on you anywhere in the world. 
From the ground, we can target you from long range. We can combat you hand to hand. And when it's all over, we can rebuild you. Tennessee has eight attendees, three PDs, two auxiliaries, supporting over 2,000 Ingus members at home and abroad. Mr. Secretary, Tennessee is in the house. Thank you. Texas. Mr. Secretary, Texas, the Lone Star State, famous for our barbecue, our hot chili peppers, hot temperatures, live music, high speed limits, and the best damn National Guard in the United States. Texas is huge, basically. We are bigger than all of you. Okay, except Alaska, but they don't have any inhabitants. <laughs> Would you like to tour the world? All y'all have to do is come to Texas to visit Paris, Egypt, Germany, Rome, Italy, Mexico, just to name a few. Texas is home to the first female adjutant general of Texas, Major General Tracy Norris, Senior Enlisted Advisor, Command Chief Master Sergeant Michael Cornichis, and our Command Sergeant Major of the Army National Guard, Command Sergeant Major John Sampa. Texas is present with 14 attendees, four on professional development, and the attitudes to match the size of our state. Mr. Secretary, Tejas is in the house. Thank you. Utah. Mr. Secretary, Utah, the Beehive State. In attendance, we have 19 attendees to include five delegates and five PDs. We are home of the 151st Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Group and the 300th MI Brigade, who between the two provide linguistic support to the US Army throughout the world, with linguists speaking dozens of languages. We boast the country's first department store. The greatest snow on earth is our slogan, average snow over 500 inches. Some of the tallest mountains in the country with peaks at over 11,000 feet. Home of the Utah Jazz, Real Salt Lake, birthplace of the inventor of television and that famous outlaw, Butch Cassidy. The only capital whose name is three words. Last but not least, we are famous for that ever palatable green jello with carrots. Mr. Secretary, Utah is in the house. Thank you. Vermont. Mr. Secretary, uh, Vermont brings two delegates and two VDs. It's also the home of the Green Mountain Boys and the best damn maple syrup this country has. Thank you. Virgin Islands. Virginia. Mr. Secretary, the Old Dominion, the 10th state to enter the Union and the 12th most populated state in the country. We are home of the cloud, the internet, where 70% of all internet traffic flows through our data farms of 10 million square feet in Loudoun County. Birthplace of our country, where the first permanent English settlement in Jamestown, where the nation surrendered, became a nation when the surrender of the British forces at Yorktown, the United States became a country. Home of eight presidents, where were the United States reunited at the end of the bloody Civil War in Appomattox. We had the first real first Thanksgiving and uh, Berkeley Plantation two years before the Pilgrims claimed their Thanksgiving, home of the world's largest bridge tunnel complex, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, 18 miles long, home of many great colleges and universities, the oldest college building in the country at University, I mean, College of William and Mary, the Wren Building, the first college fraternity ever, Phi Beta Kappa at William and Mary, the first college streaker at Washington and Lee. The oldest all-male college in the country, at Hamden Sydney, and home to the University of Virginia, the 2019 NCAA men's basketball champions. Virginia has tremendous military pride. Home to the largest Navy base in the world. Home to the largest office building in the world, the Pentagon, and to the largest puzzle palace, NGB. <laughs> we have 13 members and five PD present, and we look forward to hosting the 22 conference in Norfolk. Virginia's in the house. Thank you. Washington. Washington. 
Mr. Secretary, the jewel of the Pacific Northwest, the evergreen state where it does not rain as much as most think. Home of one of the most storied soccer franchises in the nation, the Seattle Sounders. One of the football teams most loved to hate, the Seahawks. Go Hawks. A mediocre baseball team, our poor Mariners. Fad craft beers, traffic jams like no other, and gourmet coffee. Yes, Starbucks, you're welcome. With five delegates and four PDs, Washington State is in the house. Thank you. West by God, Virginia. Mr. Secretary, greetings from the Mountain State, from the state where Mother's Day was first up observed, home of the New River and the New River Gorge Bridge, the longest steel arch bridge in the Western Hemisphere, birthplace of Chuck Yeager, Don Knotts, Mary Lou Redden, Steve Harvey, Jennifer Gardner, Jerry West, who is still on the NBA logo, Nick Saban, Alabama, you're welcome. <laughs> At one time, our state flower was the satellite dish. That went away, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the first taste to have a sales tax. We started that. Everybody else followed, okay? <laughs> Best for, for Virginia, a.k.a. West for Virginia, is in the house with two P PD, three delegates, and four attendees. Thank you. Wisconsin. We got short people. Mr. Secretary, Wisconsin has 14 members in the House, four delegates, four PDs. Our CSM will be here tomorrow, and our TAG, General Dunbar, the Nagas president, will also be here on Wednesday. Home of the Green Bay Packers, we already know that, so I won't go any farther. Thank you. Thank you. Wyoming. Mr. Secretary, Wyoming, home of the first national park, Yellowstone, the first national monument, Devil's Tower, and the home of the daddy of them all, Cheyenne Frontier Days. We are here with five delegates, three professional development, and our state command sergeant major, all riding for the brand. Thank you. This concludes the 2019 roll call. Madam President, we have a quorum. Okay, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, I think we missed a couple of corporate partners before. Are they in, the, in now? Let me have to wait. All right, I'm gonna call on, um, this time I call on Master Sergeant Daniel Riley for the Rules and Credentials Report. There he is. Thank you, Madam President. Yes, I know this is the most exciting part of the conference. It's about as exciting as hanging out with past President Harris, but please bear with me. So this is the 48th Annual General Conference of the Illicit Association. These standing rules for the 48th Annual General Conference for the Illicit Association of the National Guard of the United States, here and after referred to the, as the Association, is presented for your review and subsequent action. A two-thirds vote is required for adoption. These rules will be in effect during the duration of the conference until otherwise amended or suspended. Rule number one. The Conference Committee on Credentials of Rules, here and after referred to as the Committee, shall report the number of delegates registered with proper credentials. They shall submit a daily supplementary report to the Association Secretary at the beginning of each business session. Subsequent, uh, subsequent to the acceptance of the initial Conference Committee on Credentials and Rules of report, a member registered as an alternate delegate can, with due cause, and upon authorization by the committee, transition from an alternate to voting delegate at any time during the continuance of business. Members on officially federal or state status and honorary associate or corporate members shall not serve as voting delegates. Rule number two, to facilitate identification, administration to the voting delegate seating area and for seating, delegates shall be required to wear conference identification furnished by the association and issued by the committee, 
Executive Council members may wear their association badge for this purpose. Commissioned or warrant officers will not be seated in the voting delegate seating area. At the President's discretion, special invited guests, such as the Command Sergeant Major or the Command Chief Master Sergeant and the National Guard Bureau, or any other special guests may be seated at the head table with the executive officers for all or part of the business meeting. Rule number three, main motion offered by a delegate shall be in writing and signed by the author or authors who shall be a voting delegate of the conference. This will be sent to the association secretary immediately after presentation. Rule number four, all main motions, resolutions, and other matters concerning the expenditure or commitment of funds will be referred to the Committee on Finance for review and appropriate action. This must be done prior to a final determining vote. The referral action shall be without debate. Rule number five, proposed bylaw changes submitted from the floor shall be accompanied with supportive information to include the name, address, the telephone number, and the amendment advocate. A detailed explanation of the intent of the proposed change must be included. The change will be forwarded to the committee on bylaws for the review and appropriate action prior to a final determining vote. The referral action shall be without debate. Rule number six, recommendations contained in the report to the association have the force of declaration of intent requiring the adoption of subsequent motions and resolutions for implementation. Rule number seven, each voting delegate shall be allowed to speak no longer than three minutes twice on an issue on the same day. They shall not speak for a second time on the same issue until other voting delegates who have not spoken have, have had the opportunity to do so. A voting delegate may yield their floor debate rights to another non-voting delegate member. This is provided their allocated time has not been exhausted. Rule number eight, all reports, printed proceedings, and other material for the permanent record shall be typed and distributed to the association president. Any other printed copies will be made available to the Angus Executive Council members, Angus National Office, state delegates prior to the presentation for the general conference upon request for the state president. Notice for announcements to the general conference shall be in writing, signed by the person responsible for the announcement, and forwarded to the association secretary for subsequent action. Rule number nine, nominees from each elective office to be filled by the conference shall be limited to a nominating speech of three minutes during, uh, for the duration during the conference. Rule 10, when a roll call states is so ordered, the association president will instruct the sergeant at arms to seal off the voting delegate area to prevent any further entry or exit of voting delegates. The gallery area will normally remain open to membership. Rule number 11, the rules contained in the current uh, edition of Robert's Rules of Order shall govern the conference in all cases to which they are applicable and which they are not inconsistent with the bylaws of the association and these standing rules. Rule number 12, these standing rules for the conference shall be published as a separate document and a copy shall be provided to all executive council members, Angus National Office and state delegations upon request. The standing rules for the Angus 48th Annual General Conference consists of 12 rules, which will be offered to the general membership for their approval. A two-thirds vote was required. Questions and comments concerning these rules shall be brought before the Committee on Credentials and Rules prior to the first business session. Respectfully submitted, Daniel Riley. All right, you heard the uh, credentials and rules, the standing rules for the 2019 conference. Do we have a motion to adopt them? State, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. The last report. I don't understand. This is the standing rules. These are just for the rules. You're okay? All right. Okay. So a motion for the to adopt the standing rules was from Alabama. Is there a second? Second from Minnesota. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of adopting the standing rules say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. 
All right, the rules are adopted. Now I'll hear the credentials and rules report. Okay, so the Committee on Credentials and Rules met on August 4th, 2019, from 0930 to 11 at the Iowa Events Center lobby, and then again from 1115, located at the Iowa Events Center room 315. Delegate badges were issued as follows. Authorized delegates for a total of 251. Issued badges, 175. Proxies granted, 38. Total delegate votes, 213. The following states and territories do not have credentials issued to them at this time. Guam, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Kentucky, Massachusetts, Michigan, Oklahoma, Oregon, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. So we are in the second year of using an online delegate submission process. As always, please provide any and all feedback, and if you identify any issues to the committee chair for uh, credentials and rules. We have a number of states that are currently working on or in the process of obtaining their letters of good standing from the IRS and state, but that's, uh, that number's increased tremendously from this year, so I appreciate all the work that you're doing at the state level to make that happen. So during the uh, Credentials and Rules Committee meeting today, a concern was brought up by the South Dakota State Association leadership. It addressed a delegate allocation for an executive council member resigning from one state and another member being elected to fill the void from a different state. The resolution and recommendation from the committee has been to allow South Dakota to obtain one extra delegate vote and remove a delegate vote from Indiana. This will be the process moving forward and delegates will count towards the currently serving area director, chair, or officer. The Committee on Credentials and Rules will meet again on August 5th, 2019 from 09 to 1015, located at the Iowa Event Center, uh, right in the lobby. Madam President, this is the first of an ongoing report that will be filed. All right, are there any questions for the Credentials and Rules Committee? All right, hearing none without objection, the interim report will be filed. Okay, at this time, can I ask if um, MBA is a representative from Military Benefit Association in, in the room? No? American Intercontinental University? No? Okay. We'll recognize those two individuals tomorrow. Or, yeah, tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't on my list, and then, so I left them off, and they are corporate partners, and we s truly want to recognize them as well. So I apologize for that oversight. Um, at this time, I will call on Secretary Thompson for any administrative announcements. Okay, just a note for everybody as we close. Uh, the only point of entry and exit should be at the rear of the room to your left, my right. And... We have a wallet found somewhere in the room, and oh, you already got the owner? Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, that's the only administrative announcement I had. Thank you. Okay, and I'll now call on the host state conference chair, Command Sergeant Major Kennebec, to come forward and provide us with any announcements for this evening or anything else we need to know. Thank you. Uh, tonight's events are at the Papa John Sculpture Park. It's about a mile from the Hilton, if you know where that's at. The Marriott's just down the street from it. Uh, the Comfort Inn and the Holiday Inn are just a little bit farther than a mile, if you wanna walk. We will have buses running beginning at 5.30, uh, 17.30 for you Army folks. Um, Hawaii, we will have sweet corn, so make sure you're hungry and you get there and eat. We have barbecued pulled pork and snacks. You'll need your badges to get through the line. Um, one note on alcohol, you can't take the alcohol onto the sculpture park area. They wanted like $5,000 for us to rent that actual sculpture park. So I'm asking you, please don't take the alcohol onto the sculpture park. You can have it on the street where we'll have uh, the tables and stuff set up and the food, uh, but please don't take it in the sculpture park. And if we can please get your numbers for the banquet as soon as we can, if you can drop them in at the op center uh, so we can start getting the, the layout set together. Other than that, we will see you this evening. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, Vice President Kennebec. All right, one uh, additional announcement I was asked to make. So we want to just remind you about the memorial book. So it was posted up here this morning and uh, by the color guard. And so this is how we memorialize our Ingus members who have passed on. So if you have any uh, body members from your state who are no longer with us, online on the Ingus website, there is a, a drop down, or you can, so you can enter them there or get that information to um, Chief Master Sergeant John Harris, who is our current history committee chair. All right. Other than that, I think we're going to make record time here, and, and we have no other business for today. So we've had a very productive day, though, and it's now time to kick back and enjoy some of the wonderful Iowa hospitality. Uh, as Chair Kennebec indicated, the Welcome Night event will be held at the Papa John Sculpture Park. So please have a great but safe night. Watch out for each other. Watch out for your PDs. Enjoy yourselves this evening, and we will see you tomorrow at 0900 when we reconvene the second general session after your area caucuses. We stand in recess until tomorrow, Monday, 5th of August, at 0900 hours. <laughs>